Welcome to season four of the Agile Brand with Greg Kilstrom, where we discuss business agility through customer experience, employee experience, and digital transformation. I'm your host, Greg Kilstrom. The Agile World Podcast is brought to you by Tech Systems, an industry leader in full stack technology services, talent services, and real world application. For more information, go to techsystems.com. To read more about the topics discussed on this show, you can go to my website at gregkillstrom.com and read my latest articles or get a copy of my latest book, Meaningful Measurement of the Customer Experience, now available on Amazon and other retailers. My name is Greg Kilstrom, and I'm the host of the Agile Brand Podcast. Today, we're going to talk about how enterprise leaders can achieve sustainable strategic growth and how to avoid pitfalls along the way. To help me discuss this topic, I'd like to welcome Stuart Leo, CEO of Waymaker.io. Stuart, welcome to the show. Greg, it's a pleasure to be with you. Uh, Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Looking forward to talking about this with you. Um, Why don't we get started by give a little background on yourself as well as what led you to found Waymaker.io? Waymaker.io is an intelligent business management platform. What does that really mean? Uh, it's, It's a platform that can act as a a strategic command center for your business. Okay, does, do, you, do we need another one of those? What is that? Well, at the end of the day, we've found that most people don't have a single source of, of truth on strategic insights, growth opportunities, plans, and goals. Uh, they, they've been living in PowerPoint decks or Trello boards or uh, one-page plans, and uh, organizations have lacked a language and a skill and a system around their strategic decision making, and we came across. And so, so, so before I get into it, to sort of how and why, that's what Waymaker is. It's a place where um, we do in in a few minutes in real time what a traditional management consultant would do to diagnose a business over three or four weeks, and and we do that in five to fifteen minutes. We surface growth gaps and opportunities, and we allow teams and leaders to translate those into strategic plans and goals across their team. Great, great. Well, yeah, let's let's get started here by talking about business strategy and what some of the common pitfalls are for those leaders that are trying to achieve strategic growth. Mm. So even though uh, Waymaker IO works with many different sizes of companies for this conversation and you know for, for the audience of this show, we'll, we can focus mostly on enterprise companies and, and leaders. Sure. So um, with most, most enterprise leaders consider, they'd likely consider themselves to be strategic in what they do, but what, what's the thing that most leaders maybe get wrong or perhaps overlook about strategy? I would say there's two big things. The first is recognizing that strategy is a, a position, a destination in the future, and that really all our actions are just geared towards getting there. And, uh, and that, that position in market that you're seeking, that's, that's really your strategy. Um, who are we? Why are we different? What value do we bring to to our our customer? And then everything else has to fold in behind that. We often think of strategy as a set of actions, and in fact, if you Google strategy, it's going to give you the boring definition of you know set of actions. But when it comes to business and marketing and strategy, strategy isn't that. Strategy is a position we want to hold in the market, so that all our growth actions fall in context in and around that. Uh, and, and I'd say that's the first thing. The second thing that I think we get wrong in, in strategic thinking, and let me put on to the end of that strategic execution, is that we uh, almost always try and do too many things. And yeah. that um, focus is the lost art of strategy. And ultimately, organizations that can be clear in how they are going to grow uh, their business and build a better business and organizations that do only one or two things uh, a quarter or a half to improve that business, which sounds uh, totally counterintuitive, uh, they tend to be the ones that win over the long term. Yeah, yeah, definitely. definitely agree about focus. To, to get that focus, um, even, you know, what type of insights or information are many enterprise leaders either lacking access to or perhaps not relying on as heavily as they should in order to have more strategic success? I think the, the enterprise leader today is a big ship in a rapidly changing storm. I think yeah. is a probably yeah. good way of putting that. <laughs> I like um, that. Uh, and big ships are really hard to change course quickly. So 
you know, enterprise leaders have real challenges on their hands. Uh, it, it means that much of their work is reactive because it's not being proactive to, to drive forward movement. And so there has to be a, a mindset shift to go, how can we, we may be a big ship, but how can we think like a little ship and how can we start to operate like a little ship? How can we, how can we find the changes in the marketplace and respond to them if appropriate? And I'm not suggesting you respond to everything, uh, right, right. You, you, uh, but, but we are in a, in a marketplace where things are moving quickly and things can move very quickly in and around your organization. And traditionally, we haven't had a language around that for enterprise. And, and, and it's only really very recent in, in startup and, and emerging businesses that a language has emerged around that. And even then, it's really only on execution. So I think there's a, there's a huge gap that, that we've absolutely found and, and are pressing in on to give leaders a language around continuous improvement and agile thinking in their strategic decision making, not just in their strategic execution. And I think that's a two, two big points or a big point I want to make, two big areas of, of focus here. One, how do we continuously improve the insights coming in that we've got to make decisions off? And two, how do we stay focused on the, on the one, two or three things that we need to deliver? So that, that language we've had traditionally has been tied up in lots of traditional frameworks and tools like balance scorecard and, and others. And, and in reality, the, something like a balanced scorecard, and I'll go out on a limb here, uh, is not that practical when you're a big ship in a rapidly changing storm. You actually need to create some unbalance quickly in different areas in order to respond. And, and how we did that is something we learned out of the military, which I'm uh, happy to talk to if you want to go there. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, I definitely, I, w- I want to get to what the process you've developed and, you know, kind of the, the role of the, of the planning and, and everything like that. So why don't, why don't you talk a little bit about you know, what you've developed at Waymaker in order to, to enable this. One of the key insights we learned uh, actually came out of the British military when they were trying to transition their operational forces in the theatre of war from very uh, traditional structured environments into this new world that was very agile and dynamic. And, and, and this perhaps is only ever more present today in, in the world we live in. And the reality was that the strategic planning and strategic decision processes uh, were very cumbersome, very, very traditional. By the late 80s, early 90s, it was starting to get full of big PowerPoint uh, decks and, and quite cumbersome. And, and there needed to be a complete shift in order to, to allow teams to be incredibly effective in the field of operations. And, and that required a, a step back to say, how do we do what's known as a combat estimate or a battle planning process? How do we do that faster, with more accuracy and with, with greater value? How can we have teams on the ground identify the highest value course of action and execute that in a very agile manner. And so at the time when I was reading about this, I was coming out of corporate life and I I was fascinated because corporates can move slowly. Uh, They have immense market power, but they can move very slowly and that can be the death of them. And and so the way the the British military did this uh, in the late late 80s, early 90s, into the early 2000s before it really became a, a core practice of their leadership training was they stepped back and they taught each leader to ask and answer a small number of questions. It happened to be seven, seven questions. And that if you asked and answered these questions, you would develop the highest value course of action on the battlefield. You would clarify the situation around you. You would align the team to the most important activities and you would have planned the most effective course of action to achieve that highest value course of action. Is that kind of making sense? Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, reading about this, I was like, wow, you know, if, if, a, if, a, if one of the world's stuffiest, most traditional, uh, nothing against my Commonwealth neighbours uh, in, in England, but, uh, you know, tradition is one thing that they're well known for. If, if one of the most traditional fighting forces in the world can create enormous agility on the battlefield and be incredibly successful, how can you bring that into a business environment? Yeah. And so, strangely enough, uh, in our little consulting business we had at the time, I think I spent the next five, six, seven, eight years trying to write five or six or seven questions, and um, and and which sounds bizarre, but we re- we really did step back and go, actually, there's something here. If you step back and ask a small number of questions every quarter, and you identify the continuous improvement opportunities 
to clarify, align, and focus, then you can actually be agile, no matter what size you are, in a in a very dynamic environment. And so ultimately, we, we took across that inspired idea of asking and answering a small number of questions. We obviously had to rewrite them for business. Uh, you can go and yeah, Google the yeah. British military. And it's it's designed to you know blow something up or blow someone up. It's you know we're we're not in the business of blowing things up. Sometimes you want to do that to your competitors, sure. Maybe uh, metaphorically, you know, <laughs> <but> yeah. <laughs> metaphorically. Yeah, we're we're actually interested in in the building businesses up, and and right. so that takes on a different context. And and so on that journey, kind of just like the military when they're hunkered down behind some. Hum, Humvees in the desert, you know, putting their battle plan together. They've got some software in their hands with some data and some insights, helping them ask and answer those those small number of questions with greater accuracy, with greater efficiency, greater speed, and so that your planning process is uh, rapidly improved. And so we went away and built that for the business world. We said, okay, how can you engage your entire business or the vast majority of the business, however many you'd like, from ten to ten thousand? And how in a few minutes could we gather insights across that network of people, bring those insights back in and through some smart algorithms uh, in real time plot and identify maturity levels across and, and, and growth actions across vision, market focus, strategic growth, uh, your business model, your customer experience in terms of sales and marketing and service, your employee experience and culture. And then when you go and execute on those goals, how can we create the feedback loops through some smart algorithms to identify across your team where goals may be at risk or weak so that you can actually have really smart predictive intelligence, not about just where the opportunities are to build your business, but actually are we going to get to the end of this quarter and hit that goal that we wanted to hit? And so we've brought together this kind of thinking of seven questions with some software the software powers leadership teams of, of any rank or size across the organization to ask and answer a small number of questions. It happens to be seven questions as well. Uh, and, and using the software, ask and answer those seven strategic questions with greater accuracy, faster, more effectively, and identify the real growth opportunities sitting inside their organization. And so it's bringing together a a method that was pulled out of, you know, one of the best fighting forces, agile fighting forces in the world today, rebuilt completely for the modern enterprise and baked into some SaaS software so that you can walk into any boardroom with your iPad or your laptop or your smartphone and and you can be a strategic thinker, participant and leader. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, no, that's 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 great. And to follow on that, I want to talk about, you, you mentioned continuous improvement earlier at the, at the top of the show. So I want to kind of talk about that and, and just the concept of, of resilience. So, you know, let's, let's just say the leader has the information that they need. They're able to set this strategy in motion. I think for a lot of, for a lot of leaders, unfortunately, it's kind of the set it and forget it, you know, okay, we, we figured that out. We figured out what our strategy is. So like, let's not rethink it and second guess ourselves and, and, and stuff like that. But obviously mm-hmm. we know things are moving too quickly to, to really think like that. And that's where agile certainly comes in. That's where just continuous improvement in general. So you know, how does a leader, you know, kind of, kind of balance that, you know, leaders don't want to be perceived as, needing to be second guessed and changing their minds on things. And yet, you know, the world's changing. And, you know, how, how do you balance all of those things? I mean, I know, you know, your description of, of Waymaker provides continuous updates, but how do the how do you implement those continuous improvements in a way that's sustainable and achieves morale and, and all those things? Yeah, you, you've just touched on some of the biggest issues and challenges <laughs> in this world. Um, <laughs> right, sorry. <laughs> no, this is good. Oh, <laughs> strap in. Uh, here we go. Um, the, uh, the reality is, and, and look, as I was growing up in, in corporate world, the, the reality is you come across agile thinking. And one of the first things you discover is, gosh, it, it just, it doesn't pay credit to the past. Right. Um, it, it you know, it says, well, if the, if the past no longer works, bin it right. and just do this. And look, that's, and that comes from our lean methodologies. And, and that's not wrong 
at a certain point in the organization. And I, I think that's the key point I want to make here. Classic lean methodology is designed to help you find a market fit. And, and the goal of lean methodology is to find that market fit and then to, to, to hold it and sustain it. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. And so once you've got that market fit, two things can happen to lose it. One, the marketplace can change around you. So yeah. the fit that you had across, across your organization is now no longer relevant to the situation around you. Or two, you've grown so fast so far that you know, you've gone from startup of 30, 40, 50 people now to a startup of 500 people. And, and 450 people have diluted the average level of clarity. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. And this is not an uncommon problem. Um, suddenly the business actually doesn't know who it is, what it was that got the market fit, and how to sustain and hold that which was the market fit that was important, you know, the things that you don't want to throw away from the past. Am I making sense here? Yeah, and so uh, the idea of resilience is really important in, in organisational growth and reinvention. And, and I want to just posit maybe a definition of resilience to your listeners that maybe they haven't heard before. And, and this is really important. Resilience is the ability to undergo significant change with no loss to identity. Hmm. I'll say that again because it's, it's quite important. Resilience is the ability to undergo significant change with no loss to identity. And I think as, as organisational brand leaders and people responsible for the who we are conversation inside organisations, we can't, we can't fall into the trap of killing the core identity for that which made the organisation great. Now, there may come a time when that, possibly needs to happen but I'd almost argue that if that's happening it's it's kind of like a full clean canvas moment right you know it's right. a Kodak moment if I could put it like that <laughs> right right uh, and and if if you're managing your organization well in an agile dynamic state you're maturing your identity and I want you to think about identity in a human context you're maturing the young teenager that's now a startup growing into a young adult that's becoming a young enterprise into a strong strapping, you know, 20, 30 something that's top of their game. Is this making sense? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so what we've got to do is we've got to have a framework or a, or a set of thinking that helps us understand how we found market fit and, the, and the, the key to that market fit and then how to retain the clarity of that market fit so that it can either be tweaked or adjusted as, as the marketplace changes around you, or it can be clarified and aligned as the organization grows within you. Making sense? Yeah. yeah. And so I'm, I'm a firm believer, and we've baked this into, into, our, into our model, that you know, when we talk about brand, a brand isn't a logo, a brand isn't colors and, and all those wonderful things, but rather we should think about brand as a, as a set of thoughts and ideas held about an organization and even better, a set of thoughts and ideas held about an organization that's clarified with purpose and vision and wrapped in some personality. And what do we have here? Well, we start to, this starts to sound like a character. It starts to sound like a, like a human character. And, and for all the brand experts out there in the world, they'll be going, yeah, see, we told you so. <laughs> uh, and, and so when we think about that, uh, an organization that has character, it makes a lot of sense. You know, when, when we think about Great organisations that have really clear characters. Uh, you know, if I said, um, let's pick a, a, a global well-known brand, uh, IKEA. You know, if I say, you know, tell me about IKEA, what comes to mind? Tell me about IKEA. Yeah, I mean, simplicity, straightforward and, and friendly. Yep. And what do they do? If, if you go there, what do you get? I mean, it's, you get furniture that's easy to use and, uh, and yeah. Yep. And does it come in any special way? I mean, it's, it's do it yourself for the most part, right? Yeah, yeah, it's it's all flat packed. Yeah, and I, and I'm kind of pressing on you. I don't know if you're an IKEA shopper or not. I apologize for throwing you under the bus there. <laughs> I do have a Swedish background, so I should probably know more about IKEA than I do. But <laughs> but, <That's yeah>. okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I, IKEA in Australia is almost identical to IKEA in yeah. the US as it is yeah. in Europe and South Africa and Singapore. Yeah, 
the reality is that IKEA is one of those those organizations that has a really strong, clear character. It's got an underlying common purpose. It's it's got an underlying common positioning. It's got an underlying common value proposition, uh, underlying common personality and customer experience, and an underlying um, set of principles and culture that that will have slight tweaks, you know, based on the local culture it's in, but it will it will retain its character, much like a McDonald's. Right. Uh, McDonald's. I love going to McDonald's in Europe because you can you can order a beer with your Big Mac in Germany, but you know that's unheard of in Australia. But it's still right. it's still a drink, fries, and a burger. Uh, right. It's just that the local European context takes over, and so I think there are elements that we've got to think about that retain our core character. And I think that's around clarity of purpose, clarity of the perceptions that need to be held in the marketplace, clarity of positioning, clarity of the the value proposition and the core practices that support that, clarity of the personality and the expression of that organisation and clarity of the principles and culture. And, and I'm a firm believer that at, at, when you're building an organisation, you'll have, think about a you know, radial dial or a spider graph or something and you, and you plot those six or seven characteristics around it. At some point, the volume will be up on enough of those things that the market says, oh, we get you, yeah. You are who you say you are. You do what you say you do. I experience what you say I'll experience and I get the value you say I'll get. And and suddenly there's this fit. There's like a key that unlocks into the market. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, it's, and, and as enterprise organisations, we have to carry that key with us. And, and I think character is the key that unlocks um, organisational growth. We have to learn how to be ambassadors of that character, if I can use that term, um, as employees. And we have to build that character up from, you know, young teenager to mature 20-something to the ultimate wise 50, 60, 70-year-old, whatever. Pick your gender, pick your identity, pick your character that fits in your marketplace. And so I think as we think strategically, and and this is a really long way of answering your question, but I hope it's been interesting. Yeah, no, no. (laughs) Um, When... When we think in an agile and dynamic way, we have to practice resilience. And resilience is the ability to undergo significant change with no loss to identity. We have to come through change with identity strengthened and matured, not damaged and broken down. Yeah, yeah. And so we have to give organisational leaders a key to understanding identity. And, yeah. and, and so when we, uh, when we ask and answer our seven questions and teach people to do that, without them ever realising it, they're actually asking and answering, you know, what is our purpose? What is our positioning? What is, they're, they're, they're moving through those underlying elements of identity kind of without knowing and they're affirming and confirming and aligning and clarifying, this is who we are, this is what the market wants, this is the problem we solve, this is what we're doing. If there's a tweak or a change to that, because the market's changed, that's okay. But we're not throwing away who we are just to make a dollar today. Right. And, and right. when organisations practice that kind of agility, they become prostitutes to the dollar. And, yeah. and when enterprises do that, that's when you see corporate failures because that starts a death spiral. It, it starts this pursuit of the dollar because that's all that matters. And, and it'll be wrapped up in, hey, we're an agile organisation and, and we're going right. to excuse character flaws and let me use that term i.e what we said yesterday we wouldn't do we're going to do today why because the market's changed we're an agile organization and no people look at that the, the customer looks at that and says no that's just hypocritical <laughs> and they yeah. will vote with their feet <laughs> and you and you go hang on a minute that 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 big consultant that came in and charged us a hundred thousand dollars said we could do this no uh, they just taught you how to lie without feeling bad and and yeah. so we've We've got, to, we've got to be agile, we've got to be dynamic, but we've got to retain the integrity and character of that which made us great and build on that. We can't stay there because markets do change. Right. I mean, that's, that's really important. You can't, you, can't be a, you can't be a six-year-old in a grown-up marketplace. You're going to get your butt kicked. Right. Um, right. But you cannot, in the other sense, you know, have split personalities and split characters because you'll get massacred in the marketplace by the customer. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and just one, one last question before we wrap up here. So, you know, definitely, you know, we've been talking about leaders and their roles and, you know, learning, learning the right things to do. 
how do those leaders train the next set of leaders and and really you know ensure that this that they learn the right things i guess and 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 not the 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 wrong i i love the way you're you characterize kind of the, it's kind of the dark side of agile, um, which I you know I haven't really talked with any about anybody on the show about before, so I think it's really interesting. But you know how do how do leaders make sure that they're passing on the right things? I think this is where I believe we're bringing something new to the marketplace in in the methodology of Waymaker and also in the in the intelligence. And I'll use the British military as the example, and, and the keys in these seven questions. When, uh, when the British military turned around and said, we're going to teach all our leaders to ask and answer these questions, what they did is from, from general all the way down to Lance Corporal. Now, I'm not a military guy. I'm just, just a researcher and a reader. I, I, so if I get some terms wrong, please forgive me. Um, I, I don't know that I would know the difference either. But <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's all right. Um, I've, I, trust me, I've come on some podcasts before and they'll go, hey, we don't talk about it like that. I'm like, oh, I apologize. Um, Someone's going to comment somewhere on this, so be okay. careful. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> it's all good. Go, comment away. I'm okay. Um, what they did is they created a, a robust common language from, from general all the way down to Lance Corporal, from CEO and board all the way down to you know frontline team member. So that if you were having a strategic conversation, i.e. if you're about to go into battle, everybody knew to ask and answer this set of questions. And so you created this, this common language. And it wasn't like the only things you would ask, but they were the anchors to your, to your thinking. And so what that did is it automatically started to teach the next generation. I'm the young private that is in, is in my small platoon we're on the moors of England and we're planning out a battle and we're all huddled down asking and answering the seven questions. What am I learning? I'm, I'm learning how to do good leadership. I'm learning how to do good planning. I'm learning how to collaborate with, t- I'm, I'm organically learning this, this thing, this process that I'm going to take in. And as I grow up and, and three, five, 10 years later, when I'm leading a, a battalion on the, on the field, I'm doing the same thing and the juniors coming through are learning in the same way. And, and that was key. It, it created this kind of inbuilt organic uh, leadership development model that clarified what mattered most, that clarified who you were and what you did, clarified the most important actions, and most importantly, created an, an action-centric language around strategy, which is something we don't have in business today. And so I think that's key. You know, your, your question was how, you know, how do you pass on to the next generation? How do you build the, I mean, effectively what you're saying, how do you build that resilience into the organization? And I think the key is in, is in asking and answering those seven questions and creating a consistent language of effective strategic thinking. I don't know about you, but I've been to a lot of corporate retreats and I've been to a lot of corporate retreats that are the next year on or, you know, the same company a year or two or three later. And uh, I can tell you this. It's often a different set of questions, a different process, a different approach. There's no consistency in how we do that. And I think that's part of the key. Uh, it doesn't mean you don't tweak and optimize those, but it, it, it means you've got to build that, that language of strategy and that culture of strategy and action. So that's what I think the military did extremely well because they're incredibly good at building leaders. There's lives are at stake in their business, uh, if I could put it like that. And I think we can learn a lot from that. And, and so that's the key. Yeah, that's, that's great. Well, Stuart, thanks so much for joining. Uh, for those listening, what's the best way for them to keep up with what you're doing? Jump onto LinkedIn and search me. Follow me, follow waymaker.io. Uh, jump onto waymaker.io. If you want to know what these seven questions are and how this software works, you can just go to the Learn tab. You can read, you can download the seven questions for yourself. And you can also kick up a free trial, run a diagnostic on your own business or business unit. Uh, if you're a business coach or consultant, check out our partner resources uh, so you can use it with your clients. And ultimately, we want to give people a strategic command center that allows them to know where the improvements are that need to be made, how to plan, how to clarify and align across your team, and then uh, rinse and repeat and do that in a consistent, powerful method. And the organizations that do, they really do win. So yeah, Waymaker.io is the place to go reach out to me. I'm good on LinkedIn. I'm terrible on every other social, but uh, uh, connect with me there. Wonderful. Well, again, I'd like to thank Stuart Leo, founder and CEO of Waymaker.io for joining the show. Thanks for listening to The Agile Brand with Greg Kilstrom. Talk with you next week. Thanks again for listening to The Agile Brand with Greg Kilstrom podcast brought to you by Tech Systems. If you enjoyed the show, please take a minute to subscribe on your podcast channel of choice 
and leave us a rating so that others can find the show more easily. You can access more episodes of the show at www.theagilebrand.show. To get a copy of my latest book, Meaningful Measurement of the Customer Experience, visit my website at gregkillstrom.com. Until next week, stay agile.